Great pleasure now to welcome to our WTMY Artist Spotlight segment, a fine singer with a brand new CD out. We're going to find out all about it. It's called Human Heart. We're joined today by Natalie Douglas from up in New York City, where she's doing great work up there in the cabaret and all around the place. And Natalie, good to talk with you. How are you? You too. I'm fine. How are you, Zach? Great to talk with you. Great that uh, Dan gave us uh, the heads up on the CD, Dan Fortune, and uh, he always brings yeah. us some great people to talk to. So uh, thanks for joining us. <laughs> oh, it's my pleasure. I love that Dan. He's good. <laughs> <laughs> well, first of all, congratulations on the uh, on the CD. Uh, is this your first one? Thank you. No, this is actually my third. Third. Okay. Um, yeah. Uh, but um, it's, uh, uh, I know I shouldn't say it, it's like picking amongst children, but it is my favorite. <laughs> <laughs> well, you really kind of combine uh, some of the standards, uh, which we play yeah. here at 1280 WTMY, and then some more contemporary songs. It's kind of an interesting mix. Yeah, um, it's, uh, it, it turned out to be a much more um, personal album than I was expecting, um, but there's a mixture of things that I love. And my, I was raised uh, in Los Angeles. My parents had an extremely eclectic record collection. So it's kind of reflecting them almost and, and their musical taste being kind of all over the map, um, which was a, a great foundation for a singer. <laughs> Yeah, my parents, uh, they were a little older when they had us, and, and they had the uh, yeah. the big band record, so that's how I kind of got into it originally, from, from their record collection. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, same thing. My parents were much older when they adopted me, and so, uh, you know, their frames of reference were completely different. I always joke and say that, you know, when I was a little kid, all the other girls wanted to play Charlie's Angels on the playground, right. and I wanted to play, you know, and I wanted to play Alice Faye, like, you know, no one knew who that was, you know, um... I mean, you know, they, they just had a really different frame of reference, and it was great for me because I think it broadened my exposure to not just music, but, you know, theater and, and politics and, and, and culture, everything. Now, did you get into uh, performing uh, in high school, high school plays, that kind of thing, high school shows? Yeah, yeah. Um, I, I did the high school plays, and I did, you know, theater when I was a little kid. In fact, I came upon um, one of my first, I think it was actually my first role, um, playing the kitten, uh, the mother kitten, in the, the wonderful play, Three Little Kittens Who Rock Their Mittens. Uh, <laughs> I've heard of it. <laughs> and, yeah, in kindergarten, and I... I um, my, one of my mother's uh, dear cousins made a costume for me, and so there was a picture of me in costume in her living room not too long ago uh, that I came upon. And, and I, yeah, it's always been a part of my life. Um, they, they took me to a lot of theater and the symphony, and pretty much every Saturday morning we would do something, you know, um, is to expand my horizons. Uh, and once I kind of outgrew the kid programs that were available, um, and mind you, I was only like seven, <laughs> um, <laughs> they just started taking me around to do um, things that they loved and things they thought interesting. So, you know, we went to the museum, and I mean, I loved LA. It was a great place to grow up. My um, godfather was the mayor for 20 years, so uh, I love that town. Oh, I have a special place in my heart. Uh, but I came to visit New York after some friends from school, from college, moved here, and I fell in love with it, and so I moved. There's no place like New York for a cabaret performing, which you've, you've done so well there. Sure. There's something different about New York. I guess other cities have it, but, but I don't really see yeah. it anywhere else like it is in New York. Yeah, I don't think they have it. You know, most cities don't have as many rooms. And, and, you know, we have fewer than we did when I first moved here, but we still have several going strong, and, and that's wonderful, you know. And um, and it's also, I think, it, because it's a mecca for um, musical theater people and theater people and um, writers and artists, you know, they, it's getting harder and harder to to be here um, as a young struggling artist, but um, you know, there are some who came years ago and, and are somewhat established now, and we have the, the luxury of, of feeding off of each other. I mean, we learn from each other, we get inspired by one another, you know, um, most Excuse me, most of my closest friends are um, actors or musicians or, uh, you know, painters or, I mean, we, the, those are the people we hang out with. <laughs> yeah, great talent uh, that you can be with and, and learn from. Uh, yeah. 
learn, learn from each other. And, and just uh, in, in the cabaret society, and I know you've won an award, just kind of ring through your notes, uh, the Margaret Whiting Award. That's, that's a great award. Yeah. She's one of the best singers yeah. uh, in the nightclub and cabaret business. Wonderful. Absolutely. Yeah, it was really thrilling. She was, uh, I, I didn't know her long, uh, but I, I met her in 2001. So I knew her for, I guess it was about nine years. Um, I knew of her for mm-hmm. much longer. Um, and I, I, let me take that back. We had actually met, but that was the first time that um, she came to hear me sing. She came to one of my shows. And she was just so kind and and so knowledgeable, you know, and had so many experiences um, and told a great story, you know, and she was willing to share them. Um, and I was really honored that um, her daughter, through her uh, My Ideal Music Foundation, which is celebrating um, her mom and her dad's legacy, um, and then her grandfather, Richard Whiting, who right. wrote so many, you know, brilliant uh song so um she she and katie sullivan of the mabel mercer foundation uh presented me the award on stage at carnegie hall uh and it was a total surprise <laughs> and, and i i believe there are a few pictures that someone caught of me bursting into tears <laughs> it was a it was a really lovely moment i mean you know I, I do this because i love it um i've loved it since i was little uh and i I really do get rewarded every time I get to sing in front of an audience because um, that connection that you can make when you're doing your job well um, is really, really meaningful to me. But um, it is super nice. I mean, it is extremely lovely to to be recognized uh, with an award like that. Yeah. And just listening to, to your CD, which is called Human Heart, you, you really have a feeling mm-hmm. for the for these songs, and that, that takes a while to get that. You just can't pick it up. You can pick up and sing it, but I think to really do it right, you have to feel the lyrics, don't you? Have a certain yeah, I, I think so. I mean, I think some of it you can certainly, um, you know, learn in the sense of... Um, you know, I was exposed to these songs like you as a kid, mm-hmm. but uh, I... I think you have to have a little bit of life experience. I mean, I remember when I first moved to New York, and I was a baby, um, but thought I knew a lot of things. I was uh, 16 when I graduated from high school and 19 when I graduated from college and uh, 21 when I graduated from grad school. So I was really, really young. And, uh, you know, I, I had bewitched, bothered, and bewildered in my repertoire um, because I love the song. I saw uh, Lena Horne's one-woman show sure. when she brought it to uh, Los Angeles. And, uh, you know, I, I'd always loved the song just seeing her perform it. I thought it was just lovely. And I added it to my repertoire when I started singing in New York. And... Um, a, a dear friend who since passed away, but came to me uh, and said, "Sweetheart, you're wonderful, but you are far too young <laughs> to know <laughs> what that song even means." You know, <laughs> and um, and I, I'm sure I blinked up at him. You know, and he, he sent me um, another set of lyrics because I didn't know that the original lyrics um, Larry Hart wrote for the show, uh, Frank Sinatra and his record label thought were a little too racy for the radio, and Frank wanted to record it, like, sing it on the radio right. immediately, you know, which was such a huge hit in the Pal Joey, um, even though the show wasn't. And, um, but he thought the lyrics should be just a little tamer, you know? <laughs> and, um, so, so the lyrics that I grew up kind of knowing and that many people recorded were not the, the ones that he originally wrote. And so he brought me Bill Laurent Hart, you know, original lyrics, and, and I... I was oh oh my god I love it even more now. You know, um, yeah, so and I remember hearing it, her do it, Lena Horne do it, and yeah, you're right. Oh yeah, and she made everything seem more sexy too, just the way she sang it. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> yeah, it was a, it was a style. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. I did a Lena Horne uh, tribute uh, a couple years ago, shortly before she died, and then once after, and and I just you know she was fascinating and uh, was such a. A, a fascinating life, you know. Did so many things and, and you know, broke records. Yeah. I don't know, uh, just again, reading through the notes, uh, uh, Nina Simone is, is uh, one of your favorites. Right? Yeah. Did you see that Absolutely. documentary they did on her? I saw it on Netflix not long ago. It's kind of interesting. Yeah, 
There are several. Uh, I'm actually really partial to the one, um, the amazing Nina, Nina Simone, which what? is a, not the, the Netflix one. Um, that's that's really one of my favorites. But yeah, there. I'm just excited that so many people are discovering her. Very really underrated. Her. Very um, underrated. Yeah, I think so. Okay, especially considering everything that she touched. I mean, what, when I do the Nina Simone show, which I've taken all over the world, you know. Um, uh, in Germany, there were people coming up to me and, and saying how they fell in love with her because they saw um, the American version of La Femme Nikita, you know, and and heard the uh, um, the soundtrack, which is all Nina. Um, you know, people come to her in so many ways because she did so many kinds of different things. You know, there are her songs are represented in films. Uh, the Thomas Crown Affair, there's a big, long chunk of Sinner and Man in that. Um, you know, and... and she had the, the commercial in the 80s um, that My Baby Just Cares For Me was right. part of. Okay, that was Chanel number no. 5, I think. And um, and then her concerts and her records and her activism, you know. So much of what she wrote is political. And her stance was uh, right at the front of civil rights movement. So, you know, people come to her knowing often one facet of her. And I love... Uh, if they, you know, come to one of my shows, getting to show them there's so many other sides, you know, and she did so many different things. Yeah, great, great talent. Well, Natalie, you're going to be yeah. touring around, uh, I know you do a lot around New York, you're going to be touring anywhere around the country yeah. with the CD? Yes, um, we're going to be going to Arizona in July, and I'm going to be uh, in South Florida uh, next year, next March, I think that is, um, and uh, I'm hoping to come down to Sarasota, as I said, we have so many friends and family there, uh, I really love it. Um, yeah, we're doing a little bit, I go to Traverse City every summer, and we teach at a theater camp up there, and uh, we did a master class at Interlock in one summer, and then we do a concert up that way. Uh, my husband's originally from Michigan, oh, so okay. that's always, you know, fun. And yeah, it's, uh, I love it. I mean, it's, it's fantastic. I'm hoping later this year to get back out to L.A., San Francisco, you know, uh, Palm Springs. We haven't done that in a long, long time, so... Well, the name of the CD, again, it's called uh, Human Heart. We've been talking with Natalie Douglas, and you can go to uh, your website, right? It's nataliedouglas.com for more information, right? That's right. Absolutely. Good, great information and pictures and the samples there, but uh, we encourage uh, our audience to get out and get it. We'll play a couple of the tunes uh, interspersed with the interview here. But, Natalie, great to chat with you for a few minutes. Appreciate the chime, and uh, please let us know if you do head down this way. Uh, we'll have you on again. I would love it.